Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I have to make sure I'm not the only one that's here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is great to be in the house of the Lord once again. I tell you, I, I cannot wait until Sunday comes around because it gives me an opportunity to be together with you all because see, I can praise God myself at home by myself. And I can get my praise on just as well as I get my praise on here. And sometimes even more, I think, because there's no uh, people looking down at me. But I want to thank you for being here today. And I want to welcome also those that are coming with us on Facebook, also from Segovia and the uh, Lopez units. Uh, thank you all for being here with us and give us a, giving us an opportunity to give you a word that comes from God. Amen. Amen. And as you heard, Pastor Sell and also Olivia has uh, pointed out to you that we've been on this series about hope. Let hope arise. Because we believe that we're in a time where people need hope. Amen? Amen. amen. Now, now, that's the first amen that I'm going to require of you. All the others will be free will offerings, okay? Amen? Yeah. All right, all right. But also... Uh, we remember Pastor David talked to us about uh, encourage us with hope, and he, talk, he said, the best is yet to come. Amen? Meaning that we need to allow hope to be within us for what we are going to be meeting head on. And so the best is yet to come. Also, Pastor Sell talked to us last week about defending hope, and she talked about putting on the whole armor of God in order to defend that hope. And if you have not had the opportunity to hear all of these services, then I encourage you to go online and listen to, listen to these sermons. Because back in the day, back in my day, I know I'm not that old, but back in my day, we used to have what was called the tape ministry. And there would be a guy sitting at the table, and he would be duplicating tapes. And so on your way out the door, you would get a cassette tape. I know I'm telling on myself. You would get a cassette tape because you felt that you needed to hear that word over and over and over again, that you needed to get that word down into your spirit, man, in order for you to have the ground to stand. And so I believe that this word that God has for you this morning is one of those words that is going to be added to those that you need to get it down in your spirit so that you can become strong and that you can have the backbone that you need in order for what is yet to come. And I believe that you need to hear God's word. And some of you, your problems and your situation that you find yourself in are consistent and continual. Consistent and continual. And the reason your problems are consistent and continual, because you don't have the word of God in you. And we as a church, we continue to encourage you, get into the word. Get the word of God in you so that when it comes time for you to walk out this word, you're able because you have the word of God in you. If you're not picking up God's word through the week, and this is all that you're getting when you come into this service or when you listen online, then you've got the minimal. And this is not enough. And the devil knows that it is not enough. So he calls you to be satisfied with what you have. Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is sharp like a two-edged sword, and that word of God continues to cut. But if you don't have it in you, then you have not that ability to do that. I was born in a situation to where I knew that the road that, that I was on was not the best road for me, and it was not going to be a road in which I was going to be successful on. And so I had to make a decision. I had to do three things, make a decision for myself that I needed a different path, but also to get people involved in my life that are going to help me go in the right direction. And I knew that I needed a plan. So I got my plan together. I said, okay, this is the way I'm going to do my life. It is nice and put together. And this is the way I'm going to live my life. And this is how I'm going to pursue education and everything. And then all of a sudden, I had an encounter with God. Amen. Nice little plan. But that's not what you're going to do. Nice little plan. But that's not what I have for your life. And all of a sudden, I had to divorce myself from my plan to see what the plan of God was going to be for my life. Amen? Amen. 
And that takes listening to God, allowing God to do whatever he wants to do in your life and with your life to say, Lord, I know I won't be satisfied unless I take the path that you have for me and the direction that you have for me. The prophet Ezekiel had an encounter with God that put him on a different path. Now, Ezekiel, it means God strengthens. Ezekiel had two jobs. One was to bring God's word to the people. It was judgment is coming. How would you like to have that message? Well, let me tell you, God says judgment is coming. Judgment is on the way. He had two jobs. Let them know that judgment was coming, but also to encourage them in the midst of the judgment, in the midst of what was yet to come. His nation had made some decisions, and those decisions enabled them and caused them to forget God. And they had forgot God, and the standards and the livelihood they had for themselves was not the one that God pointed out to them, but it was one that they themselves pointed out for themselves. Sounds like our country today, huh? Ezekiel 37, verse number 1 through 3. It says, the Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me around among the bones. They covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere. Across the ground were completely dried out. Then he, sa- he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? O sovereign Lord, I replied, You alone know the answer to that. Are you in that dry place this morning to where you feel like you're in this valley, where you feel like there's nothing but death all around you? We've been talking about hope. And in this year of 2020, it seems like hope has been snatched away from you. And as we look at 2021... It's going to be all about hope. Now, as we have learned with Pastor David and Pastor Sal, hope is not something that I wish for, but it's something that I expect. Something that I expect that when I take my next step, that this place is going to hold me. Hope is the exact same way. When I take a step in God, that God is going to meet me there at that next step. Hope is based on what God is able to do and what you allow him to do in your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again. You have brought us into your house. Lord, we pray that the word that is spoken today will help us to recognize the need for us to humble ourselves, to seek your face, to learn that our situation has been caused as a result of decision. But, Lord, we pray that we will turn from our carnal, wicked ways. And, Lord, that we would choose you, enlighten our minds today, change the course of our direction. And may we take the path that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I remember when my wife and I, we first got married. And when people get married, amen, (laughs) newlyweds. When people get married, they just say, oh, you know what? We love each other so much. We don't need anything else. All we need is each other. Didn't you say that? (laughs) All we need is each other. Olivia and I, we got married. And then four months into this thing, all of a sudden, Desert Storm jumps out. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And everyone is asking us, What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because at the time, I was in the the Navy Reserves. And back then, people joined the Reserves just to have extra money in their pocket. Never expecting to go to war, but said, you know what? I'll join the Navy Reserves or I'll join the Reserves and I will have extra money. Well, all of a sudden, I find myself on a plane in January. And I told my wife, I said, don't worry about anything. You know what? They always keep us here on stateside. And so even though I've been called up and I have to go, don't worry about a thing. Because I had my plan all together. 
I said, okay, Lord, here's the miracle that I want you to do. You didn't do the first miracle to keep me from going, but now here's the second (laughs) miracle that I want you to do. Lord, I have it. Here's my Hollywood script as to how I want you to act in my life. Lord, this is the way I want you to do this in my life. And then all of a sudden, they gave us the word. You're not staying stateside. You're going to Saudi Arabia. And we were like, oh, my goodness. And everyone's still saying, what are you going to do? And all I can rise up within me is say, I'm going to trust God. Because when we find ourselves in a situation that we cannot control, all we can do is trust God. Because I was in a situation I could not control the outcome. All I can do is control my response to what God was allowing to happen. No, God did not do that, but God allowed it to happen. And God can enable me to stand strong no matter where I find myself in, no matter what the situation is. And this was the situation with the Israelites. They found themselves in a situation that they needed a miracle from God. And God was there to give them that miracle. Sometimes in our lives, we find ourselves just kind of shadow boxing, shadow boxing in the corner, kind of just wasting our time. Remember the disciples when they came to the Lord and they were saying, Lord, we've tried to cast out the demons, but the demons would not listen to us. And the Lord said to them what? He said, these kind take prayer And fasting. In other words, there's a little bit of something more that you're going to have to do in order to combat against the enemy. There's a little bit more that you're going to have to do in order to overcome the enemy that is there. There's a little bit more that you're going to have to do to stand toe-to-toe with the enemy. There's a little bit more that you and you and you and you are going to have to do if you're going to overcome what the enemy is bringing your way. Because I tell you, in this coming next year, in 2021, there's a whole lot more than what you've received already. And you've got to be full of the Holy Spirit in order to meet it toe-to-toe. It's not a time to play patty cake. It's not a time to sit back and relax. But it's time to allow yourself to wake up from your slumber. Some of us have been in a situation... It's almost like you putting your toddler to sleep at night. You've allowed the enemy to take you to your bedroom and put you in the bed and put you to sleep. You've been slumbering over and over, and the Lord is saying to you today, the time is time to wake up. It's time to get out of your slumber now. No longer be put to sleep by an enemy who wants to continue to overflow his agenda upon you. But it's time to rise up and say, Lord, I am ready for whatever it is that you have for me. Whatever it is you want to do, I am full of your Holy Spirit and enable it to happen. I've got the backbone that I need. i got the word, the two-edged sword coming out of my lips. Lord, I am full of your Holy Spirit. What is it that you want me to do? Where is the enemy? I go chasing the enemy. I go looking for him because I have an agenda that comes from God. Not his agenda, but God's agenda. And I'm here, and I show up in order to do what God has called me to do. Wake up, church. Yesterday is a different day. Today and tomorrow, God has called you to be in an army that is ready for what he has called you to do. You may think you're in a valley of dry bones, but let me tell you, God is giving you a word today. Ezekiel chapter 37, let's go back to that again in verse number one. The Lord took a hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. Let's look at this picture here. This is the picture that he was walking through. And now you look at this place as a place of dryness, a place of death. Back in the day when they would have an army that would come through, they would have their battles, all the bodies would be left there to decay. And what would happen is the army that the conquerors, they would come through and take the bodies, take all the gold or whatever was on those bodies, and they would just leave the skeleton right there or leave the body right there. And then immediately after that, the buzzers would come and poke the eyes out and eat up on the skin and do all kinds of things in that valley. And then it would end up being like this, the valley of dry bones. And here it is, Ezekiel's walking through there because the Lord had taken him there. You know, sometimes God will allow you or take you to places that you never thought you would be in. But his presence is right there with you. And the word says the Lord picked picked him up and took him to that place. Now, here he was, a priest in a place of uncleanness, walking through. 
Lord, where have you brought me? Lord, what have you gotten me in the midst of? But as God begins to speak to him, and he continues to say, he led me around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Consider this unclean place. Consider this man who was a priest. Consider as he looked upon those bones, all of a sudden remembering what happened as a result of the dry bone valley that was there. Because he was taken in captivity. And all of a sudden, he's taken back to the moment that the battle happened. When they came in upon his people. And all of a sudden, his friends and his family and his loved ones, all these different ones that are there, they're dead. And all of a sudden, he's in this valley remembering what happened yesterday. But no matter what happened yesterday, find yourself in the present where the Spirit of the Lord is right there along with you. And he has brought you, allowed you to come to that place. But he is there with you, embracing you, holding you, giving you the power to stand at a situation that you may collapse and fall upon yourself because of the emotional things that are overcoming you. But knowing that his presence is there gives you the ability to stand tall, gives you the ability to be strong, gives you the ability to say, Lord, I don't know why this happened, but that it happened, I know that you're here with me and you'll take me through it. And you have a message for me in the middle of this valley of dry bones. And I'm here to hear your voice. What do you have to say, Lord? In verse number three, it says, then he asked me, he asked him a question in the midst of that situation as he's looking over that valley of dry bones. And he said, son of man, son of man. Now that phrase exactly tells him who he is. It continues to help him to understand his limitations as a man. He is limited. Each one of us are limited. We are the son of men. We are limited in our frailty, limited in our humanity. And he says, son of man, recognizing the limitations that are there. You need to recognize the limitations that are on you today and that you need God in your life. And he says, can these bones become living people again? And oh, I love what Ezekiel says here in the midst of it, his response to God. No matter what has happened in his life, he continues to remember who God is. He's not angry with God. He's not upset with God. He's not calling God on the coffer. But in the word, he says, oh, sovereign, oh, sovereign, oh, all powerful God, oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone has the answer to this question. You alone have the answer to my situation that I find myself. You alone knows to come out of what's going to happen as a result that I'm on this path in which I am on. The Jews were in a devastated situation. They had gone into captivity with King, King Nebuchadnezzar and all of his mighty soldiers, took them into captivity. Now here they were, slaves, and they look at their situation and they were devoid of any type of spirit of hope. They were hopeless. Hope helps you transcend the present. Hope helps you transcend the present. Well, what do you mean by that? Helps you to get above the situation that you see yourself in. That I can look down on my situation, step aside from the emotions that might be there, and look at the situation and have the mind and the heart of God as to what to do in that situation. Hope helps you transcend the present. Rise above. As God asked him that question, Ezekiel was able to respond. Only you, almighty God, have the answer. For whatever you may be going through this morning, only God has the answer for you. And you have to step out of your comfort zone and say, okay, Lord, what is it that you would have me to do in the present situation that I find myself in? Now, many of them had thought that God had abandoned them because of them going into captivity. But by the very reason that Ezekiel was in a conversation with God and God had brought him there, enabled him to know that you have not abandoned me. And sometimes we look at the situation and we look at it from the perspective of the enemy or we look at it from the perspective of the of flesh and say, oh my goodness, look where I am. Whereas we have to look at it from the perspective of God to say, that's not where you will stay. 
That might be where you are right now. And for reasons that only I know as to why you're there. And many of us, we find ourselves in the situation that we're in because of our own choices. They were there because of their own choices. That's not the picture that God had planned for them. That was not the promised land that God had planned for them. That was not the expectation that God had in his heart for them. But they had a whole new expectation that they had in their own heart and in their own living as the word of God will continue to pour out and show us here this morning. We have to allow the spirit to lead us to the place where God is taking us. But we have to have a hope within ourselves to know that we can get there. Otherwise, the, the enemy will cause you to defeat yourself. He will cause you to defeat yourself by taking away hope. And it's not about my comfort. Sometimes we say, well, if I'm comfortable, then this means this is where God wants me to be. If God is blessing me, this is where God wants me to be. Well, God was blessing the Israelites, but they take that, took that blessing that God had given them and they put it on themselves, lived it out for themselves. God was calling them to something better and something higher. They had forgotten what Moses had done. They had forgotten their Red Sea situation, their Red Sea trip. They had forgotten all of that and began to live for themselves, began to live out their own lives. And we see in the word over and over among these kings, they live how? According to what was right in their own eyes. We have people living in the world today who are living according to what is right in their own eyes. And the Spirit of God is telling us to church, it's time to wake up and recognize where people are living today. It's time to wake up and recognize where you may be living yourself in a slumber and not understanding what God is wanting to do. As the power of God and the Spirit of God wants to move you in a direction, you have to open up your eyes and open up your mind, open up your heart, and allow your spirit to move in the direction that he is wanting to go. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 1, it says, Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. When we find ourselves here in 2020, we have to rejoice in the Lord no matter what. Amen. As I said earlier, there are times I find myself, I'm at home. And all of a sudden, I feel a need to worship God. All of a sudden, I feel a need to praise God. And sometimes I have no idea what is going on. But there are things that are going on in the spiritual that I will never begin to understand. But when the Holy Spirit moves me to begin to worship God, begin to praise God, I need to move in that moment. When the Spirit of the Lord calls me to talk to someone or I stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone and something is going on in their lives, I have to have the Word of God in me, the Spirit of God in me in order to meet the need that is in their lives. And God is calling each and every one. This is not just a pastor job. This is everybody in the, in the church job. In order that when someone is standing in front of you with a need that is in their life, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, no matter what the need is, you, the people of God, the church of God, is able to stand on a platform, stand on a foundation that is firm in Christ to say, Lord, what is it that you want me to say? Lord, what is it that you want me to do in the midst of this situation? But if I'm asleep, as many in the church are, then I'm not available I'm not ready to do what God has called me to do. Many of us, we're not in the word of God because we're in the word of Netflix. We're not in the word of God because we're in the word of Hulu. We're not in the word of God because we're distracted by everything and anything else that will give us that comfort that we need here in COVID-19. God has not called you to a life of comfort, even in the midst of the trials and tribulations that you find yourself walking through. God has called you to be still full of the Holy Ghost, full of praise, full of worship, to say, Lord, what is it that I, as your soldier, can do in the midst of this moment, in the midst of this situation? And Paul, he tells them, here he says, whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. In other words, that you would have a hope in times like this. There are people all around the globe who have it a whole lot worse than what we have it here. But yet and still we're sitting back on our lazy boy, thinking that it is all so bad. 
It is not as bad as it's going to get. And we, the people of God, need to be ready and full of the Holy Ghost as it is coming. Paul tells us to stir up our faith, to fan the flame, the gift that he's given. Each one in this church, God has given you the gift of his Holy Spirit. And he's telling you right now is the time to stir it up. Stir it up. Keep it ablaze. Rekindle it. Dry bones, awaken. The Lord is in this place. And he is telling us as a church, it's time to wake up. No longer sleeping. No longer relax. Hope helps you trust the future. Hope helps you trust the future. Ezekiel 37 in verse number 11, it says, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. In other words, what had happened to them as a result of their captivity, they felt like they were in a dry place. They felt like they were abandoned by God, that he had left them, and they were to fend for themselves. In this year, we have people that feel exactly that way as a result of where they are. But I love what the word says here. It says, they are saying, God is not saying this. They are saying we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. They had lost their hope. Not remembering what God had done. Not remembering the miracle of the Red Sea. But had forgotten what God had done. He says, they are saying we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. And some of you may be feeling that way with you. With your family saying, you know what? Our family is finished. No, your family has just begun. You have just begun with what God is wanting to do. And so you have to remember what happened as a result of coming into captivity. They went into captivity as a result of their own choices. And guess what? Their children followed them into captivity. Why? Because they were a part of that family. And we as the men and women of God... We make choices that our children have no choice but to fall into captivity with us. As men and as women, head of your home, head of your house, God expects you to be full of the Holy Spirit, to be full of his word, that as your children are coming up behind you, they have the ability to make choices according to the word of God because of the example that is lived out in front of them. As they see you in the word, they have a desire to get into the word also. And as you continue, and for those of you who have children that have, may have gone astray, as you continue to pray, as you continue to seek God, as you continue to expect God to continue to do what he said he will do, your children will be saved. And your children's children also. But you've got to pray and you have to believe and you have to have a hope down within you as to the things that God is wanting to do in your family. Some of you sitting here, you're the first ones in your family to get saved. And you're turning around the generational things that have been happening in your family. But as a result of you hearing the voice of God, you have made a change to your family. You have made a whole new direction for your family. Stay the course. Stay the course. Don't give up. The Israelites were in a dry place. They had given up. They thought God had abandoned them, and he had not. Ezekiel 37 and verse uh, number 12 continues. It says, therefore prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people. He is still calling them my people. He still has a relationship with them. He still has a love for them. His heart is still with them. No matter what the choices that they had made, his heart was still with them. He was still embracing them as his children. It's just like your child. Even though they may make choices that go in a different direction than what you want, you still call them your child. You still have a love for them. No matter what. No matter what. And he says, oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile. In other words, this is what's going to happen in the future. I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. I, says the Lord, I will bring you back to the land of Israel. What th when this happens, oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. In other words, when the miracles begin to happen, you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I am who I said I am. 
I am that I am, shows up to cause a miracle to happen in your life. But it's not going to be a Hollywood miracle moving according to your expectation, but according to his expectation. They expected God to rescue them even in the midst of their sin. And sometimes God will allow you in the midst of your sin to continue to go in the direction that the sin is taking you. And then once the sin has done its course, then he will come and say, okay, now are you ready for me to pick you up? Now are you ready for me to take you? Now are you ready for the miracle that I have for you? Now are you ready for the life that I have for you? You have made your choices. They have taken you in a direction that has been away from God, but I'm bringing you back into myself. And that's what he says to the church today. I am bringing you back to myself. For years, for years, you have made choices that have taken you to entertain the people of the world, to entertain the spirits of the world, but I am bringing you back to myself. I am bringing you back into an embrace that you are my children. You are my children. This is the church that I have called the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the church that he has died for and he's coming back for a church that is without spot or wrinkle but you have to go through something first because of your choices that you have made. God is raising up a church that is going to be strong and mighty because he's coming back for what? He's coming back for a victorious church and these situations and things that are happening outside are causing us to become those victorious people that he has called us to be. We either be full of self or full of spirit. We either be full of God or full of the world. We have a choice. The Israelites had made a choice to be full of themselves, and God allowed that course, that path, to take them in that direction. But he is calling us back to a life that is full of his spirit, full of him. In verse number 14, he says, but I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your homeland. Something that was out of sight for them. Something they never expected to happen. But all of a sudden, the word of the Lord comes and reminds them of their past, their present, and gives them an opportunity to have hope for the future. You may be sitting in a situation that it seems like all hope is gone. It seems like nothing else will ever come back together again. But God is saying to you this morning, have hope. Hope that is based on the word of God. Hope that is based on my spirit because I will show up and I will show this world that there is a God in heaven who is about his people. There is a God in heaven who is there to bless his people. There is a God in heaven who has put you on a path Then he will take you on that path. He will enable you to accomplish the things that he has called you to do. He will enable you to do what his spirit says he will do through you. You are the church. You are the church of people that he has called to be more than conquerors. And in being more than conquerors, he has to put his spirit in you. And you have to allow that spirit to be directed in a way that put demons to shame, that put demons in the corner, that overcome demons. You don't have to be afraid of the enemy. Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. God has placed something within you that is more powerful than anything that is in this world. But sometimes we back away from the world. We shy away from the things that are there. We shy away from the wars and the rumors of war. But let me tell you, there is something that is in you that is greater than anything in this world. You have to recognize that the power of God can do all that he said it will do in his word. But you have to believe his word. And step out on the path that he has called you to be on. That's the God that we serve. Not a God that's of milk. Not a God that is weak. But a God that is strong and mighty. And he has put that spirit in you. That that spirit will come out at the appropriate time. At the right time. And as you hear the voice of God. You walk in these things that he is telling you. The Israelites had given up hope because they looked at their situation. Don't look at your situation. Look to your God who has called you to be more than a conqueror. And it says, then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. Your conflict or your situation that you find yourself in, that could be a catalyst for your change. The prison that you find yourself in, that can be the prison that gives you a release in your life. Sometimes we allow ourselves to be in a situation that wakes us up 
to say, now you know what? I cannot continue to live like this. I cannot continue to make the choices that I made yesterday. I need to make new choices, different choices, and I'm going to allow the God in heaven to lead me in that direction. No longer controlled by my own emotions. No longer controlled by my own appetite towards sin, but now being controlled by the Word of God, being controlled by the Spirit of God, walking in a direction that He will show me, being on the path that He has for me. And this is what he was calling them to. They had allowed themselves to be put in a trap, to put in a situation. Their appetite had brought them in. It's almost like a rabbit. You've seen the rabbit traps. I think we have a picture. What is the motivation for that rabbit to get into that trap? His hunger for food. We have been a people that have been so hungry that we put ourselves in the trap that the enemy has for us. This rabbit going after that carrot has no idea the trap that is laid before him. The Israelites had no idea of the trap that was laid before them. Some of you have no idea the trap that the enemy had laid before you. But the Spirit of the Lord is awaking you today causing you to get out of your slumber. Hope helps you to transform the past. Transform the past. Meaning that as I look at what God had done in the past, I know where he's taking me in the present, and I know where I will end up in the future. I'm able to transform that past. I'm able to look at those miracles from a different perspective. I'm able to look at my life from a different perspective. Yes, I may be surrounded by a dry place. I may be surrounded by dry bones. I may be surrounded by calamity. I may be surrounded by all kinds of things. But all of a sudden, there's a hope that stirs within me that all of a sudden, I see things as God has seen them. I see things that God has already saying, you're going in this direction. You're going to be better than what you were yesterday because of the power that I'm in enabling for it to happen. They had forgotten God. They had forgotten the one who had given them the release. Ezekiel chapter 16, in verse number 15, it says, and this is God talking. And God, sometimes when he whispers in your ear and he tells you the things that you have done wrong, and all of a sudden, the conviction of the Holy Spirit began to rise up within you, because the enemy, he wants you to feel a situation to where, the, not of conviction, but a condemnation. Condemnation tells us what? Oh, terrible me. I will never be any good. And some of you kind of remember, you may have had parents of other people who have spoken into your lives. You'll never be anything good. You'll never do this. You'll never. But God brings conviction. That is something that is his Holy Spirit. And God, in that conviction moment, he gives you opportunity to say, there is a way out. The enemy tells you, there is no way out. You're just a terrible person. But God says, no, you're greater than that. You're better than that. You may have made bad choices, but you're better than that. And you know what? If we know better, we ought to do better, but we don't do any better. But we need God in order to get us out of that situation. Amen? Amen. This is getting better. <laughs> oh. When I was preparing this message yesterday, and all of a sudden I put a song on, and my heart began to break as a result of hearing this word. And some of you, God is doing something in your lives right now that you never expected to happen. Let him. Let him. In verse number 15, it says, but you thought your fame. Now God is showing them what they did, and the choices that they made. He said, but you thought your fame and beauty were your own. So you gave yourself as a prostitute to every man who came along. Your beauty was theirs for the asking. You used the lovely things I gave you to make shrines for idols. In other words, all the gold and all the silver and everything, all the treasure that God had given them, they made an idol out of it and began to worship it. Now, we're not like that, are we? When God begins to bless us, we don't take those blessings and all of a sudden make it an idol. We don't take those blessings and all of a sudden spend all of our time being distracted by those. But, oh, no, we don't have idols here today. That was something that happened yesterday, right? Oh, hello. <laughs> 
I gave you to make shrines for idols where you played the prostitute. And I love this next word. God says, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I cannot believe you made the choices that you made with the blessings that I gave you. It's unbelievable. And he says, how could you How could such a thing ever happen? And we find ourselves in a situation, and sometimes we look in the mirror and we say, how could this have ever happened to me? It happened because you were going after that carrot. It happened because you were going after the flesh. It happened because you were going after something that was not of God, but God had given you the blessings in order for you to use as a result of blessing others and also to bless the people of God. How could such a thing ever happen? In all your years of adultery and detestable sin, you have not once remembered the days long ago when you lay naked in a field, kicking about in your own blood. In other words, he's saying, you don't remember when you were in slavery. You don't remember when you prayed to me and asked me to get you out of that situation. And I got you out of that situation. I began to bless you. And then you used the blessing that I gave you in order to distract yourself, take yourself away from me. God doesn't bless us in order for us to forget him. He blesses us that we can remember him and also use it in the lives of others. Can you hear me now? Remember that commercial? 2020. God is saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? When you got saved... position of your heart was saying, God, anything you want. I'll do anything you want. I'll go anywhere you want. Just show me the way. And now here years later, distracted, asleep, in your own mind, your own heart, your own way. And God is saying this morning, wake up. It's time for the church to wake up. People need the church. There are places around the globe they can't meet like we're meeting here. They say it's COVID-19. We have taken all kinds of extremes of protection for you to be here. You're here. There are others who need to be here. This is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's time to wake up. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you this morning. We thank you that you have rustled us up out of our slumber in order to be a church that's on fire for you. Lord, revival is not something you plan. Revival is not something you get ready for. But revival is something you hunger and thirst as a person hungers and thirsts after the presence of God. Lord, we need a revival in the church that the power that comes from your Holy Spirit would be alive. Lord, your church is essential. Your church is more than marvelous. Your church is more than wonderful. Now may we rise up and be the church that you have called Not the church that people think we are, but the church that you have filled with your spirit. Lord, we just thank you for what you're accomplishing. Not by the power of man, but by the power of the spirit. If you're here this morning and you would say, Pastor Carl, I've been one of those who've been asleep, asleep at the wheel, and the Lord has rustled me up, jarred me, pushed me,
to say, wake up. The alarm has gone off in my spirit that I need to do more than what God has called me in order to allow his spirit to be alive in me. If that's you, I want you to stand right where you are and say, Pastor, pray for me. I've been settling for what I had. But as you have painted a picture of the future, what I have today is not sufficient. I need more. I need more. All over the auditorium, I want you to stand right where you are as recognition. I need something more. What I have is not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. Heavenly Father, you see those that have stood at home and all over this auditorium. They're hungering and thirsting after your righteousness and your Holy Spirit. Lord, they recognize the path that you have for them. They're going to need more than what they have. They're going to need to be filled with your spirit, filled with your word. And they're hungering for that. Lord, I pray that you would pour it out upon them now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fill them afresh with your spirit. Oh God, may we never be satisfied continue to want more of you. Lord, help us not to look at the world as the barometer of what you're doing in the world. As the enemy rises up, your spirit is there to meet it, to push it down, to overcome it, to destroy it. The enemy may come to steal, to kill, and to destroy but Lord, you have come that we might have life, overwhelming life. Touch their lives. Bless them. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. If you're in this audience today and you would say, Pastor Carl, I do not know this Jesus that you're talking about. I do not know him as Lord and Savior of my life. And I recognize a need. Or I recognize that there's a need for me to come back to the Lord because I have stepped away. If that's you, just raise your hand right there where I can see it. I need to come back to the Lord or I need to recommit my life to the Lord. If that's you, right where you are. Amen. Amen. Any others? Just hold it up so I can see it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, you see these hands all over the auditorium and those that are at home who recognize they've been in a dry place but the waters of your spirit are bringing them back to life your word as you spoke to Ezekiel to speak to those bones to speak to those people they came alive I want the church to pray with me right now and especially those that have raised their hand to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. As we all pray, and those of you at home also. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sin. I ask for your forgiveness. Come into my heart and live in me. And from this day on, I'll never be the same. My life belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen.